In this video, I'm going to be watching and summarising every video by digital artist Nero. We're going to be going over things such as anatomy, colouring, study methods, drawing the face, hands, clothes and much more. Then at the end of all of this, I'll be giving you the Word document with five pages full of art advice and actionable steps so that you can get as much value as possible. So let's jump right into it. Starting out with the first video titled How I Study Drawing. The fundamentals are key. He says to copy from real life first to train your observation. Copy whatever you want and know that you can always stylize later. Warm up with drawing 3D shapes. This is also how he breaks down complicated subjects like anatomy. To add to this, he uses reference as much as possible to better understand how to draw things and expand his visual library. Finally, do all this consistently. Don't draw with motivation, but by discipline. Next up, my daily drawing routine, the Saitama method. The idea here is that you can't reach your destination if you don't even know where you're going. He likes to think of a piece of art that he wants to create and work towards that goal piece by piece. Like Saitama, if you practice every day with focus, you can make massive progress. The question though is what to practice. He explains if you break down the thing you want to draw into pieces, then you can study each of those things that you find. For example, let's say you need to learn anatomy. Then he would first study just drawing, then add 3D forms on top, and finally do a memory test. This way it allows him to practice practice each element individually until he feels confident with it, then at this point you can combine it all together. Now for anime style drawings his main fundamentals which he likes to focus on are lines, shapes, perspective and values. And there's a few tips for how to improve on each. For lines, always try draw with a single line and avoid chicken scratching. Also use cross hatching and hatching for showing volume. For shapes, practice drawing a cube in different angles or for a more advanced version you can try and apply this to drawing a character or anything really in perspective, which is the next fundamental. Learn one, two and three point perspective as a base, but then try to gradually use the guideline less so that you can get an intuition for what perspective looks right. He uses a box at first which he puts his drawings in to help, then finally value. Lighter values generally mean calmer, and darker with more contrast is more dramatic. He practices using grayscale first to get the hang of it. Next up we have how he studies drawing anatomy. It can be broken down into light sketches which are just warming up with drawing 3D volumes, then doing some gesture drawing and structured studies, which are more in-depth breakdowns of each body part. For the head he uses the Loomis method, for the hands he blocks out the general shape with a rectangle and lines for the fingers, then fills them in with cylinders. The arm is divided into two rectangles for the upper and lower arm and two circles for the shoulder and elbow. Then with the leg you can see it's blocked out in a similar way with the main difference being that there's some asymmetry to account for. Finally for the torso and hips he uses an oval and square with a line for the spine connecting them and then a cube for the ribs. With all these the idea is that once he has the basic shapes down he can define more details. The next video is mostly just showcasing the Huion Canvas Pro that he got but he still gives a couple tips for his workflow. He says his process is always changing but he usually blocks out the main lighting setup before adding in the details and he also uses multiply blend mode as well as other colour correction techniques to help him with his colouring. Here he's studying Magoon. So I guess I'm studying him studying Magoon? That's kind of weird. But there are some good lessons so let's do it. He said Magoon is very calculated when he draws. With a checklist and lots of planning, unlike himself who usually goes off intuition. The first bit, Magoon talks about how drawing for others and making consistent work that others want to see can gain you attention online. But then it goes into drawing fundamentals. First up is space and perspective. He explains the different point perspectives and how they use the horizon line and vanishing points. And then to practice this he says you can try and put more complicated forms in perspective or trace over images by putting their perspective grid to understand how it should look like in real life. The next fundamental is shape. He says you can learn the ratio of different body parts as a general guide for their proportions, but when you are drawing you don't need to measure it every time. Instead the focus is blocking out the head, ribcage and pelvis, then hands and feet while focusing on drawing with geometrical shapes. To add details after this, instead of learning all the details, just learning the main landmarks can make it easier. These are the collarbone, shoulder bone, elbow, wrist, hip area, knee and ankle. Lastly, light and shadow. The main point is to take the bounce light into account when painting, to make sure it doesn't look flat and has a lot more realism. Now on some art habits I wish I knew earlier. He talks about five main habits which are number one, having consistency when combined with smart practice by using lots of reference, probably from Pinterest which you can use to do studies. Number two, talent isn't necessary to be a good artist, consistent practice is more important. Have dedication to your passion and also avoid comparing yourself to others and making excuses. Number three, fundamentals over style. Fundamentals is everything, that's what will progress your art. Number four, Patience, discipline and consistency are very important qualities for your art progress in every way. Number five, when in doubt just draw what you see. 
Right colouring guide, let's go. His first point is the brushes he uses. He uses the G pen, watercolour and airbrush, but also notes that brushes don't really matter that much. Improving your technical skill is more important. He says that he mostly uses the magic wand for selecting the line art, and for colouring the drawing he uses four blend modes. Multiply and colour burn for the shadows, with the colour dodge and overlay for the lights. His layer hierarchy uses two folders for skin and hair, within each having a base colour and then the blend modes layers on top clip to it for rendering. He also makes sure to use a variety of hard and soft shadows. Now he goes over a few different workflows to create different styles. He adds base colours, then shadows, then midtones, and finally added the bucket tool to colour everything then decreased opacity to 30%. He also added a hazy blur effect by duplicating the drawing and adding some posterization and Gaussian blur to it. His second one is the same to the first one, apart from he adds shadows inside the first shadow and says to use a more saturated shadow colour. For the third one, it's an Ilya Kuvshinov style study, where the difference is that he uses a stronger line art, more of a manga style and adds a sunrise gradient to the drawing before adding the hazy blur effect. Now he does some full illustrations with AI art as a reference, which he thinks is good as it has the style that he wants to draw in. He's just using the methods mentioned before and also gives the tip of putting your painting in black and white to check the values. Now it's the art skill tree. Basically there's four main fundamentals, shape, anatomy, perspective and light. For shape he practices observation and copying. What he says is the way to learn basically everything is to practice breaking it down into simple shapes and drawing studies like he said in another video. To practice each of these, especially the detailed sketches, he's just breaking it down into simple shapes. Now a quick q and I'm just going to go over the questions with some art advice. Number one, how to deal with art frustration and not liking your artwork. You need to believe that if you keep drawing every day you will eventually get better. Try to focus on analysing good artists works and then getting inspired from it instead of letting it motivate you less. Number two, how to balance making artwork and doing studies. Try making drawing schedules which can give you a clear plan on when to do what. Number three, what's a very important skill in drawing? Copying because it lets you collect information on lots of different things. Next video, how he draws the face. For the method, it's all about the Loomis method. He uses these steps. Then practicing that by using reference. If he's using reference, he'll sometimes trace over the reference with the Loomis method to help, but he still won't try more than three times on a single one because he wants to keep the drawings going and not get stuck. When drawing the face, he starts with the eyes as the most important feature and also practices drawing cubes in different angles. When doing face anatomy, he focuses on drawing skulls by using the Loomis method for proportions and then once again breaking it down with simple shapes. He looks at the three areas of the face in thirds and varies them slightly based on the character. For example, a more feminine character might have a bigger forehead and a more masculine character would have even thirds. He uses the Asaro head to study the planes and once he's comfortable with that, he'll use it to study lighting as well. For stylization of the face, he'll create a reference board of the style he wants to learn and practice copying it by applying the fundamentals to that style. For anime, this would be making the eyes more prominent, especially compared to the nose and mouth, and being expressive with the hair shape while sticking to a certain head type. Next is how he draws clothes with a painting guide at the end. He starts of course with simplifying forms, and then says to learn shape and anatomy first as a base for the clothing. When drawing clothes, he starts with the outline and draws them as a few smaller shapes, each with their own fold to simplify. He thinks about the type of fold that will occur and the material it's happening on before drawing it. When drawing the main sections, he starts from the tension points because the stretch lines will always follow it due to gravity. In some cases, there will be a tension bar instead of a point, which means the lines go from the bar like in a curtain. The main types of fold are diaper fold, common with scarves that are drawn with U-shapes, and sometimes overlapping layers. Drop folds, which are spiralling down with inside parts. Spiral folds, which include patterns of X, Y, or Z. Zigzag folds are drawn with a Z and are common in the arm. And, and finally, half lock folds, which are a form of overlapping folds. He says it's helpful to be aware of all these types when drawing. He gets references from professional models in neutral poses, and when painting, he carves out light from multiply blend mode with not too saturated base colours. Then he uses the airbrush for bounce light to finish it off. How he draws hands. First he divides it into the palm, fingers and wrist. For the palm his practice would be to start with planes, then use boxes, then bent boxes to represent it. For fingers he starts with lines that are roughly equal size to the palm, then makes silhouette fingers thinking about the triangle due to the middle finger being the longest. He draws a chicken leg for the thumb and cylinders for fingers. To go a little bit more detail with the fingers, they're split into three mostly equal parts. With a tip like a katana, with a flat top and curved bottom. Then for the wrist, he's just using a simple cylinder. 
On bone structure he says don't worry about all the detail when you can simplify with 3D shapes. The only important point is that the bone structure of the fingers is converging towards the wrist. Then lastly his colouring method is the same as previously, but the new tips he gives are using a variety of warm and cool colours for the base, shadow and details to create contrast and putting red and yellow on top with overlay to add some saturation to the fingers and on the edge of the shadow. Now a full tutorial on painting skin and light. His workflow starts out with a muted colour for the base that's pretty light so he doesn't need to add lights later. Then he adds hard shadows with a multiplier layer. The colour for the shadows could be anything based on the context. Usually it's just a darker, slightly more saturated version of the skin colour, but for example if it's a strong blue sky it might be blue. After this he adds mid-tones on multiply, making sure that they're not darker than the shadows, and he finds having them more saturated can look good. He puts some highlights using colour dodge and then lastly bounce light using overlay blend mode. The rest of the video he goes over some different styles but the method is still the same so here's some more tips he gives. He uses a smudging brush to balance out the hard and soft edges. He adds some redness to the skin around the cheeks with an airbrush and he tries to focus on building up values first before adding colours, which he practices by doing grayscale where he's working from the big to small shapes as he paints. Finally, he also practices different lighting setups with unique colours to get used to how light works in different situations. Last video, how he draws the human body. He says the main sections of the body are the head, ribcage and pelvis, which can be divided into boxes. The size of them can be measured in ratios compared to the head width. The ribcage and pelvis are almost two heads wide, the ribcage is 1.5 heads high and the pelvis is roughly one head high. He uses these three cubes to break down any pose. For the skeleton, he simplifies the skull to a circle and a cube. He uses lines for the spine to connect to core parts, then draws the ribcage with an oval. He uses landmarks to correctly place the significant parts of the body. For the ribcage, the main landmarks are the collarbone, sternum, and bottom coastal cartilage. For the shoulder, it's the scapula and head of the humerus. He simplifies the pelvis to a box, but tries to draw it fully when he can. To go on to the legs, the femur are tilting inwards and attached to the side of the pelvis. Now some general proportions. The average body is 8 to 9 heads tall with equal upper and lower body length. The elbow is just below the rib cage with the hand reaching the middle part of the leg. Then the upper and lower leg have the same length. He uses simple shapes for structure and then defines them to make anatomy. He then explains detailed anatomy for every body part in the video, but it's more than I can summarise without just missing out body parts so I'd recommend you watch that if you want to see all the anatomy. Just watch from 8 minutes 30 till the end, I'll put it on the end card of this video. His final tip is that when studying anatomy he's visualising its 3D shapes and focusing on drawing those. Right that's it, that's every video. Now like I said earlier I would give you the word document with all the advice so here you are just screen snip these five pages i hope you enjoyed